lesson number five. And lesson number five is going to be partly on Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem. Now before you can do Pythagoras' theorem you need to appreciate that whenever you use Pythagoras' theorem you must have a right angle triangle. If you haven't got a right angle triangle then you can't use Pythagoras' theorem. Also it's useful to be able to know the name of the longest side of the right angle triangle. And the longest side right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter which way around the triangle is drawn. By the way there's no such thing as upside down because you can always turn the paper around anyway. But you need to appreciate that the hypotenuse is a side that is opposite the right angle. And it's the longest side. Okay, when do you use Pythagoras' theorem? Well, you use Pythagoras' theorem to find the third side of a right angle triangle when you know the other two sides. So to use Pythagoras' theorem, you're finding the third side of a triangle when you know the other two sides. Let's look at this case. Finding the hypotenuse, knowing the other two shorter sides. I use the term shorter size. Never think of the shortest or the middlest. We're either considering the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, obviously the right angle, or one of the shorter sides. So, using Pythagoras' theorem to find the hypotenuse when you know the two shorter sides. I'm just going to go straight for how you do it and just to get the answer not explaining it, that would take a lot longer. We square the two shorter sides. We work out 4 times 4, we work out 3 times 3. We square the shorter sides. And after we squared the shorter sides, because we're trying to find the longer side, the hypotenuse, we need to make things bigger. And to make things bigger, we add. Now we squared to start with, and to finish with, we do the opposite, or inverse is the proper term, the inverse of squaring, which is square rooting. And the square root of 25 is 5. So in this particular case, the question mark, the length of the hypotenuse, is 5 centimetres. It really is as straightforward as that. Let's look at another one. You use the theorem find the third side of a right angle triangle when you know the other two sides. So, finding the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, knowing the two shorter sides. Square the two shorter sides. We usually put the large number first in any calculation, so why not now? Nine nines or 81. Four fours, 16. Squaring the two shorter sides. Because we're trying to find the longest side, we need things to get bigger. So we'll add those two together. And if you add those two together, you get 97. Therefore, the hypotenuse of this particular right angle triangle is the square root of 97. Now this time, of course, we'll need the calculator to work that out. So we want the square root of 97. The square root of 97 is 9.8488 and so on. We should always write down the full calculator answer and then some more appropriate answer. So as far as I'm concerned in this particular case 9.8 centimeters is appropriate. One more like that. Okay here we go. One more like that. Finding the hypotenuse knowing the two shorter sides. Find the longest side, knowing the two shorter sides. So we need to square both of the shorter sides. In this case, 13.25 and 6.85. We need to square both of those and add them, because we want things to get bigger, because we're trying to find the longest side. This time, let's type it straight into the calculator. 13. 0.25 squared plus 6.35 squared equals. So those two 
squared and added comes to that. Therefore the longest side, my question mark, equals this value square rooted. So this time I'm actually going to just write a type in square root of the last thing I had. In other words, the square root of that. Now, you need to appreciate how your calculator does these things and get used to your calculator. Always write down all the numbers in the window of the calculator. I won't, just to save time. And then write something suitable. In this case, I think to one decimal place is suitable. Okay? So, using Pythagoras' theorem to find the third side of a right angle triangle, when you're trying to find the hypotenuse, you square the two shorter sides, add them together, and square the result, and that'll be your answer. Let's move on now to you use Pythagoras' theorem to find the third side of a right angle triangle when you know the other two sides. Let's suppose we're trying to find one of these shorter sides. Now notice how I've written shorter. We're not bothered whether it's the shortest or the middlest. We are finding one of the shorter sides. So in other words, now we know the hypotenuse. We know the longest side. The approach is the same. And this time we're going to square the hypotenuse. And we're going to square the shorter side that we're given. And because we want things to actually get smaller, we're trying to find one of the smaller sides, we'll subtract. Because when you want things to get smaller, subtraction will do the job. 15 squared is 15 times 15, which is 225. 13 squared is 13 times 13, which is 169. You should subtract these two results. Should we do that on the calculator? Or can you do that in your head? Let's see what happens. 225 minus 169 equals 56. So, we started by squaring the longest side and squaring on the shorter sides. To finish the question, to find the answer, the question mark is square root the value we've got. So let's square root the 56. And that gives us the length of the shorter side. Again, I should write down the whole answer and then write down a suitable answer to the question. One decimal place is suitable. This is found the shortest side, but it doesn't matter which of the shorter sides we're doing, the approach is the same. Let's look at another one. Finding a shorter side. If we're told the hypotenuse, and we've got one of the other two sides of the right angle triangle, this is the approach. Square the hypotenuse. Square the shorter side that you're given. You want things to go smaller because you're finding one of the shorter sides, so you subtract. 13 times 13, 25 times 25, subtract. 169 take away 25 is 144. We started by squaring, we finished by square rooting. The opposite or inverse of squaring. Start with squaring end with square rooting. And the square root of 144, I hope you agree, is spot on 12. So our missing length is 12 centimetres. Another one. 